<laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm looking forward. Well, if that bump put a smile on anyone's face, then I don't think you could ever be an angler. What a place this is. Wow, looks magnificent. Fine, a nice one. Oh, that's a good one. 50 kilo plus. As I've lent into it, it's just erupted big explosions on the surface. Where are you? That's what I mean. The build up to a trip like this is a, you know, something that you think about every single day and when you know about it for three or four months prior to going abroad, you, it's all you ever think about when you go to bed at night and when you wake up in the morning and you're looking at all your kit and you're thinking, is this the right stuff to take? Is that the right stuff to take? Have I got enough of this? Have I got enough of that? And the excitement building up every day that gets closer and closer and closer to you going to this trip that you've been waiting for for so long and then when it comes around and you're setting sail wow you know it's it, it's just exciting from the get-go and uh, you know that that the build up to it can sometimes be the best bit of of the trip you know when when you're getting all your stuff ready and then when it falls right when you actually get to the venue and you know that you've prepared for it properly, you know, that can just be as, as exciting as the actual trip itself. So even though you think that you've got everything sorted, we still needed to get a boat arranged for Brad. And even though I'd, I'd ordered myself a boat, got myself a nice brand spanking new boat, we thought we might as well see if one of the other consultants in France has got a spare one for Bradley to use. And funny enough, JB, we got over to the other side of the pond and we had to go over to his house and you know just just traveling through France even though it was sort of on the way it was a little bit off the map to get the JB's house you know it's just another thing that you've got to prepare for even keeping space in a van for that boat to get in there when we got to the other side and obviously got to JB's place so you're looking for a boat looking for a boat yes right must be somewhere in there <laughs> it's going to be dirty and full of dust. But... <laughs> Lovely. When we, when we had finally arrived at JB's house, that, wow, it was, it was like some old school Fox museum there. It was, it was amazing. He had this old Fox van, which I think was his very first van that he had used. I think he's been with a company for about 13 years, I believe. And this, this van looked like it had been there 13 years as well. There's an old Fox out in here. Yeah, yeah, you'll, you'll find that a nice... Uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> Lucky hat. <laughs> He's got some McDonald's vouchers here. I wonder if they're still valid. <laughs> Ten percent off McDonald's here. Oh, free Sunday. <laughs> which was really cool to see and all, all this other dusty stuff about you know that an old beetle in his garage and he sort of pull, pulls this trailer out that's got bradley's boat on which has got two inch thick dust on it yeah it was yeah just cool to sort of see you know a little bit of history there i suppose from the guys obviously that do a lot for fox on the other side of the pond before you get to any venue, whether you've seen videos or pictures of the place, you always got a picture in your mind of what the place is going to look like. And nothing, nothing could prepare me for what I was about to see when we first got to the venue and I'm staring at 11,800 acres of water and wow, it just yeah blew me away. Amazing. Wow. Well, if that doesn't put a smile on anyone's face, then well, I don't think you could ever be an angler. What a place this is. Wow, looks magnificent. So as much as I wanted to obviously take the venue in, we were losing the light. We'd got there at about four or five o'clock in the evening, French time. And yeah, we had to get the van down to the boat launch. We had two lots of kit there obviously, a lot of camera equipment, we had to get the boats blown up and yeah, it was a race against time to obviously get over to where Andreas was. Soon as we had got into the swim, Matt Andreas, first time I'd ever met Andreas, uh, uh, yeah, lovely, lovely guy. And first things first, I, I've got to get base camp set up. Whenever I go abroad, got to get base camp set up. That's the first thing that goes up. And then I feel like I can fish properly. And by the time that had happened, it was at least midnight at this point. There's no way I was going to bed without putting any rods out. I decided not to put rods out via the boat, which most people would do. I thought I'd just wade a couple of rods out into the edge. So that's what I proceeded to do. Even with, you know, mo most big venues, you can, especially a place that's 11,000 plus acres, you can wade out quite far in, you know, the margin goes for, you know, probably a hundred yards you can walk out there at sort of waist deep. So. I knew that, you know, the wind was gently trickling into us. I thought, you know, just wade a couple of rods out so at least I could go to bed at night knowing that I've got two rods fishing. The only issue I had putting the rods out was the fact that I didn't have a tin opener with me, but I, know, I had this pen knife that I'm sure I see on some video or other, someone opening up a can of worms or whatever it was with this dodgy looking tin opener fit. I had a nightmare. An absolute nightmare trying to get into this tin, it was hilarious. And there was three of us looking at this tool thinking, I don't think either of us knew how, the, how it actually worked, to be honest. <laughs> Come on, Bradley, tell me how you use this bloody thing. I'm too busy enjoying this. Shut up, you don't know how to use <laughs> it, that's what. <laughs> So the first one is there. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Some German engineering right there, eh? So waking up the next morning, nothing had happened on the rods, nothing had happened for Andreas either, but wow, what a sunrise to wake up to. Again, nothing can prepare you for something like that. Truly, truly magical to wake up and see that sunrise that was there. It was like, like nothing I'd ever seen before. I've been to many, many lakes and seen many sunrises, but 
nothing quite like that sunrise. It was truly, truly amazing. So with that, two rods set out in the margins, I sort of thought to myself, do you know what, I'm gonna leave two rods out in the margins and then I'm gonna fish my other two rods. You're allowed to fish four rods on there per angler. So I decided to get out in the boat and yeah, go and find some spots. So with a place, obviously, like that, the, the, you would be mad to go out there without an echo sounder. So I'd set myself, gone out into the pond, and you're basically, for the first sort of half hour, three quarters of an hour, you're pretty much staring at a screen. That will give you so much information of what's going on underneath the boat, especially where if the water's a little bit murky, you can't see with an aquascope, you're gonna need an echo, definitely. So that's what I was basically doing. I was mapping in my own head what the echo sounder was telling me and you know, getting a real feel for the swim whilst I was out there in the boat. So what, what I'd normally do is at lightly looking areas that you find on the echoes, little drop offs, little humps and bumps, gullies, whatever you've got out in front of you or whatever the echo's telling you, them likely areas, what I'd do is just chuck a H-block over the edge, then have a little lead round with a leading rod, and then the minute you know that that's gonna be your fishing spot, either for the, the night ahead or the session ahead, I then set myself up a halo pole and knew that you know that would be the spot that the pole would stay in. If ever I was to get a fish, that pole's never gonna cause me any issues whatsoever. So with the halo marker pole in place, the next port of call was to obviously bait up. Now, I'm sort of speaking to Andreas on the build up of the trip and this, that and the other. He was basically saying, I think a lot of people fish with little traps and this, that and the other. I don't like to fish like that. I like to fish my own way when I go abroad. So I decided to bait up with a decent amount of boilie. So I set a big spread of SLKs out all around the marker pole, just in front of it, around where the rig's obviously gonna be, out to the left, out to the right, a big spread of bait all in the area that I'd put the halo marker pole. And then after that, it's obviously a simple case of just dropping the rod, You're not gotta get the pole back in, you can leave the pole in place. If you do get a bite and the fish runs past the pole, the pole will just lean over, it's never gonna cause you any issues. So we've got the rig down and then headed back to base. The rest of the day sort of fizzled away, you know, we're just taking it all in. When you're on a place like that, it goes within a blink of an eye. So we, we're getting now into dusk and the place just felt like it was coming alive for me, to be honest. So Andreas and Brad have gone off to film him, re-dropping his rod, fresh rigs, fresh baits, ready for the night ahead. And whilst that happened, I was sat just sat in my chair, taking it all in, thinking, you know, wow, you're looking at your rods, aren't you, thinking, oh, will one go, will one not go? And it's that second you're not thinking about the rods, all hell broke loose. It's like someone just hucks a grenade at you. The rod, my, my margin rods arced round, a blistering take, an absolute nosebleed of a take. I've levitated out my chair and I'm on the rod instantly. The the bite, where where the fish had torn off, it had torn off on the surface, because it was obviously quite shallow, it was in the margins. The fish had torn off on the surface, and I'm, as I've lent into it, it's just erupted, big explosions on the surface. And that's obviously where the reality is, whacked me in the face, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm playing my first card, I'm playing my first card. And then I thought, Bradley's not here. And I couldn't, I was thinking, no, no. So I'm shouting at the top of my voice, in the hope that Brad might hear me, but I, I sort of looked around, I could see the lads out in the pond and they would have been too far away to get back by the time I'd got this fish in it. So I completely forgot about the film inside of it within an instant. I'm lent into this fit and I, I just can't tell, it was like an out of body experience. I've, I'm holding this, I'm looking at my shoes thinking, just walk in Lee, just walk it. And I'm walking out dragging my net behind me and I can feel the clay all sloshing in between me toes and I've, I'm just like in awe that I'm playing this carp on the wonderful shanty. I can't believe it. It was an amazing fight. Fish had left, right, big explosions and then I'm just saying to myself, please stop fighting, please stop fighting, please stop fighting. I've dragged the net out in front of me. Fish is wallowing up on the surface now. 
I can see the couple of tigers hanging out and hanging out of his chops and I'm just thinking, please stay in, please stay in. And ju uh, just reached out, I, I waded right up to the cold water, hit me balls and netted this fish and total euphoria. Just, I, I, I just, I almost can't explain it. Truly an amazing moment, a, a memory uh, that will last a lifetime. Well, look at him, absolutely phenomenal. I'm over the moon with him. I know he's not the biggest shanty carp in the world, but wow, my first ever one on a session, to be honest, at the minute where I didn't think a bite would come and it just well out the blue. And that is the beauty of this big pit fishing. You never know when a bite's come along, gonna come along. And when they do, they're just as epic, no matter what the size. What an awesome creature. I'm over the moon, absolutely buzzing. Yes! Oh, wow. Now there's fish up to 90 plus pound in Shanty, and do you know what? The, okay, this fish wasn't, you know, one of the monsters that we were hoping for, but you know, none of that mattered. None of that mattered at all. It was one of the smaller commons that are in there, but to be honest, I was in total euphoria. None of that mattered. It honestly didn't. The size of it, whatever, it just, I was truly, truly buzzing. And with the sunset that we had, along with holding my first ever shanty carp. I, it's, I, you know, it's just memories to last a lifetime. I was truly, truly in awe of this fish, no matter what size it was. Once I'd sat back, realities, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm back down on earth again. We sat back, myself, Brad and Andreas. Andreas had cooked us a beautiful steak meal. I think he called it a German steak meal, a German traditional meal or something or other, but it was, truly divine and um, we had finished that off with a lovely bottle of red as well. So that night had come and passed, no, nothing had happened that evening and then next morning come another magical sunrise, you know, just truly, truly epic and it then started to chat as, as the morning went on, conditions started to look really good. You know, with these big sort of venues, you want a wind pumping into your face and that wind started to come our way. So with that in mind, you know, I'm wanting to know a little bit more about obviously Lactada. So I sat Andreas down and, you know, basically punished him until he had no more left to tell me about the wonderful Lactada. Yeah, we're just going to chew the fat a little bit about Andreas's fishing on the beautiful Lac de Deux. You fished here for over, what, 20 years now, is yeah, it? Yeah, over 20 years, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, started fantastic. started 1996 on the lake. So um, I have a big, big passion also for the lake. Yeah, it's, um, I lived, I, I had many situations here, many different situations. I had the, the fish dying, what was really negative for the yeah, lake. It yeah. was in 2005. Um, but we have now the new lake with new fish, new stocked ones, and uh, they are really growing fast. Mm. It's a totally different lake than in the past. In the past, you had thousands of carp. You saw schools of carp, but they were jumping in front of you all over. Um, and now you have really rare carp. It's, it's, it's sometimes it has something from a low stock when they are not in your region. So it's really um, a special kind of fishing. It makes it. It's really fun. It's also interesting. Yeah. Um, I think you also prefer, prefer some some kind of fishing styles where you need to think about. Yeah. Where you don't only cast and catch a lot. Yeah. yeah? yeah. So where you really need to to uh, find the fish and and work for them. Mm. 
And so with all these new fish, um, they come in 2005 or 2006 and they are now up to 40 kilo. Yeah, yeah. wow. Uh, we speak about a lot of 30 kilo blast carp, a lot, uh, not a lot, um, a lot of 35 kilo also yeah. and two known uh, 40 kilo plus on this natural mega lake. So, um, and for sure, when you see the size of the water, you can imagine how powerful these carp are yeah. Yeah, and what they are doing. You know, we have also a lot of catfish in here and sometimes you catch four or five catfish a night mm. and then in between you think, ah, oh, the next one, oh man, you go out and play the fish and think, ah, think, oh, it's again a catfish, bloody yeah, yeah, and push it up and yeah. then you see the grey <laughs> neck and you say, <gasps> Yeah. <laughs> and you are like oh, going in the boat and like okay please, I know please, that please. feeling <laughs> yeah. and um, hopefully we will get one of these mm. yeah I placed three rods in this area where I believe the old fish are still um, feeding and let's let's see yeah fingers yeah. crossed yeah. yeah yeah well hopefully yeah. hopefully one of them dream carp that are swimming out there yeah. for either one of us will be on one of these rods sometime soon just after sunset then we had another lovely, lovely meal and next minute Andreas has had himself a bite and you know we were just hoping and praying that that was going to be a carp. So I was dropping another rod at the moment and during dropping this rod I get the run or better a few beeps and now it's around about 30 beeps, 20 beeps, I'm not sure on this rod. So let's see what's on, let's pray for a carp. I see the float is coming. Oh, we have, oh, it swam. Oh, bloody hell, that's definitely a carp. It swam into the H block marker, so to the bank back, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's on. It's a carp. Yeah? Yes, it's definitely on. A uh, catfish. No, a carp. Fine, a nice one. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's not nice to have the H block marker line in the main line during playing carp guys so what we will do we will get a bit closer to the fish grab the line cut this marker line If you want an adventure, that is one. <laughs> I believe it's in. Yes, bloody hell. Unbelievable. I'm really happy now in life in front of the camera so and that is not a normal um, catch because uh, yeah with all these line imagine the fish had this eight clock marker inside or around the line but we have it cool and we cut this other line Yeah, you saw the fight just before and uh, you saw how this fish went into the H block marker. Crazy, huh? It's not a big one, but it's a fine, it's a luck to dare carp and every carp counts in a lake like this. And it, believe me, I know what I'm talking about. I know the lake really well. So I'm happy. It's fine. It's a good start. So we have the second fish now of the trip. Let's hope for a few more and maybe one of the big ones are coming and yeah, say hello to us. So then we let him go. Oh, well, directly away. Perfect. Hoping and praying for the next one. 
that was really impressive fight for this size of fish and I'm really happy now. After Andreas had returned that carp, you know, the, the session feels almost made at that point then, you know, we both had a carp apiece, we both sat back, relaxed, thinking, you know, this is it, you know, we've, we've both had ourselves a fish. You, you always want the pair of you to catch whenever you go abroad and, and yeah, next minute, I ended up having a bite from something that was a little bit strange. There he is. There he is. Mate, that's a roach. Is it a roach? If that's a roach, I've got a world record. Mate, it's a little carp. It's a mixture. No, it's not the carp. It's a mixture of roach and bream. <laughs> it looks like a little F1. <laughs> Wow, that's my first one of them, whatever. <laughs> God, man, this is hot. <laughs> He's battered me. I can't see anyone. <laughs> Mate, I've got like grit in my eyes and everything. <laughs> so I think Moz was a bit wounded from that roach bream hybrid slapping him in the face and uh, decided to call it a night. So yeah, I've all retired to bed. Um, about three in the morning, one of the guys' receivers has gone into absolute meltdown. So I'm trying to get the camera gear sorted and get my life jacket on. And it was Andreas' alarm that had absolutely ripped off. It was, it was going for a good sort of 20 seconds by the time we got to the rods. And then it stopped. But that was only because the, the, the take was that savage. It had pulled his rod off the rest and his alarm was underwater. And um, yeah, luckily Andreas managed to get to the rod in time. And we, we've headed out sort of under the moonlight to, to fight this fish. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, it's really going fast. So, yeah, guys, we just had a run in the night. I haven't looked on the clock, so I don't know which time it is, but I was well sleeping. Oh, it's hard to get out in the middle of the night sometimes. So it's the second run on this rod. It was the rod we replaced again, and we had the fish yesterday night. So this night, sorry. And uh, yeah, let's see what's on. Something is still on there. Oh, mate, I saw something big. Up. Hmm. So it's really milky water. Normally we would see the fish. Yeah, I say it's a catfish for sure. <laughs> Can't be a carp. Yeah, it's a catfish. Big catfish. Ah! <sighs> no glove, nothing with us. Perfect. Should we give him a bit more power? Then it comes up. Oh, well, I don't want. <laughs> I have not the. I have forgot the glove. Normally, I have every time a glove in the boat. I laid it in the cook tent. No, not too big. Yeah, guys, that can happen also on these lakes. Oh. That can happen also on these lakes. For sure, they are in here. It's a shame. Sometimes you catch them more as carp.
So, we let it go. Yeah, a nice wake up call, but not what we want. Yeah. Okay. Catfish. Oh, yeah, guys, you see it. The big lake fishing is not always fun. <laughs> Sometimes you have a catfish between. It's not what you expected and also not what you want. Especially not in this time of the night. Yeah, let's replace the rod and let's hope for a, some carp action soon. It's worth noting whenever you're going to a venue quite like this, then you definitely need the right kit for it. Rod wise, it was always, you know, the Explorer is an amazing boat rod to use because you can collapse that rod down and if you know, it, you can get to either end of the rod, which is what you need when you're in the boat. You need to be able to get to the tip eye if the braid's wrapped around the tip eye or, you know, vice versa. It's always, it's always good to have a rod that's a similar size to the boat that you're in. So the Explorer rod is not only man enough for the job, it was the perfect rod to take to this venue for myself. Real wise, now I've, I've got my FX13s on there. You might say that that is quite a big reel to have on a rod like the Explorer, but to be honest, it balanced perfectly. It was a lovely reel to actually have on that rod. And the reasons being why you need such a big reel for a venue like that is because some of the toes can be 200 odd yards or 300 yards plus out there. If the fish are showing out at that range, you're gonna wanna fish for them. So having big reels with lots of braid on. Braid wise, you might as well bulk it up, you know, and have something that you know is gonna be reliable. So the 55 pound horizon, couple that with a 50 pound leader, you know, the venue can be snaggy. I didn't, I, I didn't really have a clue of how snaggy the venue could have been. So having stuff like that in your armory is an absolute must. Now the venue was quite snaggy, hence why I'd put you know, this kit onto me real and obviously using this rod. So just to back up the strength of the gear, Andreas has had a, the take of all takes, rod ducked over, blistering take, he already had his life jacket on, he's jumped in the boat, he's headed out there and he was definitely attached to what was obviously an absolute monster. Yeah, we just said it before. 11 o'clock big fish time, but we don't expect a big fish like this because this is a catfish. I'm pretty sure If this would be a carp, it would be more than 60 kilo. I believe but no oh, man. Where are you? There comes a long catfish. Oh no, yeah, shame. You would like to catch a carp, but you need to handle them also. Maybe it's a two meter fish. So <laughs> it's a nice animal at all. Come on. No line. Oh man. So, you see it? Not too small this one. Gives us a good fight. And he loves 
the Pacific tuna also. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, we let it go. Okay, drop it back. Goodbye. Don't come back again. Look. That's it. I'm a bit powered off. Now it's not too easy, but um, yeah, it's, it's for fun. It's good to have something like this between. But now hope really for a big one on this spot. I had it often that I caught a few catfish. Normally you think, oh, you change the place. It's not good. The catfish have it. No, don't care because the catfish move also and the carp move and the big carp, they go between the catfish and they take the bait. They search. I had it, caught 12 catfish in a trip and the next fish on the spot was a 27 kilo carp. So it can happen every time. Yeah. So we replace the rod now and uh, hope for carp. So for the final night, it was my turn to cook. And um, with Andreas doing a sort of traditional German meal for us the first night, I thought I'd end the final night doing him a, a traditional English meal. So decided it was going to be a chicken gel frazee. Moz must have liked it because he didn't even come up for air. But uh, to be fair, it's probably a good job he didn't because as soon as he finished, literally took his, mark, his last mouthful and he had an absolute melting take. And uh, yeah, whatever was on the end was pretty powerful. I'm sure this is a cat because of some of the powerful runs it keeps going on. It's had a few powerful runs whilst I've been playing it. And I'm sure, yeah, this is probably a cat. It was on my long rod that I'd had the, the weird roach looking thing the other night on and Yeah, I'm, I'm adamant that this is, if it's not a cat, then it's a giant carp, that's for sure, but I'm sure it is a cat, you know, on a milky malt. Weird little creatures they are, and some of the things that they pick up. But good fun, all the same. Playing what's probably gonna be my last ever fish hooked on the shanty this trip moons in the background absolutely mega whether it's a cat or not it's still an absolute great buzz i'm well, considering this is a a mega powerful fish like most catfish are this explorer rod is putting up with all of the hard fighting lunges that this fish is giving me. And to be fair, there's plenty of power behind this rod to be getting a fish like a catfish, which I'm sure if anyone's ever played a cat before, will know full well the amount of power that they've got and the amount of power that you need in a rod. And this rod is definitely putting up with anything this fish is trying to give me at the minute. Yeah, that's it out there, look. Ugh.
Thank you. Welcome, mate. <sighs> you take a picture. <laughs> God, no. <laughs> <laughs> With it being the last evening, Andreas had popped to the shop and he'd come back with a French tradition. I'm unsure about this, to be honest, but yeah, I got welcome to the world of pasties. Is that enough to kill me? <laughs> it oh, is. Is yeah. it really? Oh no. Ah, you will know it from fishing, this taste. Buns bite. No. Um, Come on. Monster crab. Oh yeah, it, now it's getting closer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why is he putting what? water with it? What? How much water? It's an aperitif. Or oh, how you say it in English, yeah? Oh my god. Why, is my Why has that got milk in? <laughs> <laughs> Mine also. Cheers. Where are your cups? Where's your cups? <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's the amount he put it. Like two drops. Oh, I'm waiting for you to bring that mic. I'll hold the scared. camera. I'm scared. It's fine. It's really okay. It's yeah, yeah for I'm sure. For oh, I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm waiting for him to do some sort of somersault. Oh, that's good. He's going in for seconds. Oh, mate. Save some for the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, badly mm. so. Let's have some <laughs> What? So what, what do I do? Put a bit of drink cheese on it, yeah. eat it, and have a sip of your drink. Mm. Why did you put so much water with it? <laughs> it has 45%, you can't drink it poor. Pure. Why? You can drink, but it's like anise. Aniseed. Ani yeah, right. You will know it from fishing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Is this why your eye popped out last night? <laughs> wow. Is this... <laughs> Look at me, Andres. Yes, I do. Are you okay? Yes, I'll find... If I drink this, will I be okay? I'm not really sure. <laughs> oh, no, but you, you need to try. Yeah. I, oh, I need to try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're eating a lot wait, of wait, bread. Wait, who drives the car? <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Look at him, look at him. Do it. Just drink it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait, burning. wait. This is burning my eyes. I'm wait, burning. I throw mine away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I like it. I wonder you put so it's much bloody water. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. It's a French tradition. You drink it <laughs> with water. You drink it Thank midday God. or in the evening. <laughs> Unfortunately, that night was uneventful and yeah, we got treated to that one last sunrise of the trip. Again, another amazing sunrise that just live on in my mind forever. The pack down began, started to pack everything away, started to say goodbye to things. Goodbye, piece of clay. Goodbye, mini crayfish. Goodbye, Ben. <laughs> goodbye, Andreas. And Everything was packed up, put in a boat and a set sail for one last time for the trip all to come to an end. It was such a memorable, memorable trip. One of the most amazing trips I have ever had, to be honest. I've been lucky enough to have some truly, truly magical trips abroad, but this one was, was just magical from the get-go, from the phone call of me going right up to this day, to be honest. And okay, I didn't catch myself a giant shanty carp, but none of that mattered. I had had an amazing time with Andreas and Brad, and that trip will live with me forever. Although a place like Latterdur can seem quite daunting to most of us, but I can truly say any of you could go out there and just do it. Just go out there and and fish it. Just try it. You know, it can 
you know, what, what's the worst that can happen, to be honest? I, I, I speak to a lot of people about place, and as soon as you mention the size or anything about, oh, no, that's not for me, but I can tell you now, just the experience of being there is more than enough. Who knows, maybe there'll be a return to Lacta de film in the pipeline, and maybe I might catch that mythical monster that swims in that water. That's why we are here. These are the big ones of the lake. It's a 25 plus. And around. So, really nice one. Really big fish. So, the last night it was uh, again a fish of more than 22 kilo. And I'm really happy. And it was a perfect trip. And now we let her go. 